All right, so uh, this is talking about RoboGuide. We did that last week. Um, so looking at the teach pendant here, okay, the teach pendant is our way to, number one, teach the robot programs, but beyond that, we use it basically, it's our interface to the robot. So we use the teach pendant to speed up or slow down programs. We use the teach pendant to uh, manually jog the robot. We use the teach pendant to uh, change data values or variables. And some of that can actually be changed while the robot's running in auto mode, especially the data. We'll talk about uh, data registers and position registers later on, and you can change those on the fly, which can be dangerous if the robot, uh, you make a change and you haven't properly tested it. But uh, some stuff you can change on the fly with the teach pendant, even when the teach pendant is turned off and you're in data mode. Uh, we also use it to make uh, backups of the system and backup of programs uh, and just monitor the status. One of the nice things about the teach pendant is as the program is running through, it'll show us the program it's running. We can watch the program that's running. We can watch data registers and see how they're changing. Okay, and as I already said, we can actually force in changes even while it's running in auto mode, but we can monitor that. All right, so here's a picture of an older style teach pendant. And the key things to note, every teach pendant is going to have an emergency stop button. So if you need to stop the robot, you hit that, and that's going to stop the robot from moving as soon as possible. It slams on the brakes and stops the robot. Here, the teach pendant has an on and off switch. And as I just kind of talked about, if you're running in auto mode, the teach pendant is off. But that doesn't mean that you can't do certain things, like change data registers and change some other information that may affect the way the program's running. All right, so the, by turning this off, the teach pendant still has power, okay? The teach pendant still works. Um, it just doesn't do everything. There's some things that you can't do while the teach pendant is off, but there are some things that you can do, so. All right, now this is a newer, teach pendant here, you notice that the on switch has moved a little bit and it's got a green displays. This one here has little LED lights over here, kind of labeled what they mean. Uh, the one I worked on one of these and I couldn't read any because all the labels were just kind of smushed and destroyed. So uh, it was really kind of hard to work with because I couldn't remember which LED meant what on a lot of them. But here on the newer eye pendants, okay, they are a colored graphic display. And they have the status buttons, instead of being separate LEDs like they are here, they are um, just up here in the top left corner of the teach pendant icon and they change colors. So in general, green is good and red is bad. <laughs> uh, but when you see red, over right next to the red, there'll be a fault message. So you need to make sure that you actually read that fault message. Um, the teach pendant or the robot is not the teach pendant but the robot itself actually has a web server built in and so you can actually go in there and there's a bunch of stuff you can do way beyond the scope of this class but you can create like custom pages for turning things on and stuff like that all right so there's basically six main parts to the teach pendant there's the on off switch 
there's the emergency stop button, the dead man switch, which is on the back of the uh, teach pennant, the indicator lights, which may or may not be built into the display screen, depending on which version, and the LCD display and the keyboard. All right, so I already pretty much talked about the on off switch. If you want to jog the robot, so jogging the robot means we're going to make the robot move manually and put it in some position that we want. And we do that with the teach pendant. To do that, we have to turn the teach pendant on, which means we the robot has to be in T1 mode. So the controller has to be in T1 mode. The E stop is, is an emergency stop. Notice it will not power down the controller. All right, what it all it does is stop the robot from moving. When the E stop is pressed, it will stop the robot from moving. In general, you don't want to hit the e-stop when a robot's going full speed because it's going to wear out the brakes, right? It's really not good. It's just like when you're driving down the road, you don't just slam on the brakes to stop. You press the brakes lightly, you let off the accelerator, coast a little bit, and, and step lightly on the brakes, right? You don't slam on the brakes. That's hard on everybody in the car. Same thing with the robot. You really don't want to use the emergency stop unless it's an emergency. Okay, so, um, you know, let the robot, if you, um, it, there's a hold button on the teach pendant. One of the buttons there is a hold button. If you press the hold button, it'll actually slow down the robot and stop it. Okay. So when the robot is moving and you press that hold button, it will stop it from moving. Or if you're simply jogging it, let go of the buttons you're pressing, okay? And it will stop. But if you re, if you hit the emergency stop or release the dead man, all right? Basically releasing the dead man is like hitting the e-stop. It slams on the brakes. So ideally, you make sure that the thing has stopped moving before you release the dead man or you know, and, and hopefully you don't have to hit an emergency stop. But if it is an emergency, by all means, don't hesitate, hit it, you know. Or if it looks like, let me put it this way, if it looks like it might be an emergency really quick, hit it, you know, and, and stop it if you have to. But, uh, you know, but you don't want to just say, hey, the robot's running full speed and I want to stop it just because I want to stop it and hit the e-stop. No, hit the hold button. If you hit the hold button, it'll stop, but it'll stop and using what they call dynamic braking, and it'll slow down. So it'll take a little bit longer to stop, but it will stop, and it'll be much less wear and tear on the robot. Okay? So, you know, if it's not a dire emergency or looks like it might turn into a dire emergency, just press the hold button and let it come to a halt. All right, so the uh, dead man switch is on the back. Um, they're kind of in a, a yellow uh, thing. Now, the one, our oldest robot, the dead man, I was having some problems with it the other day because the plastic, or is, well, it's kind of a, a rubbery coating that goes actually over the switch to protect it from dust and dirt. And ours is so old that it's like all cracked and and actually broke off, pieces of it broke off and got in there and wedged it in and it stayed wedged in, all right? Um, and you may say, oh, that's really bad, uh, which it may not be great, but the, the thing about it, um, if it gets stuck closed, the robot will figure it out because there's actually some built-in software that says, hey, if the dead man hasn't been released in a long time, then it will actually spit out an error and say, somebody's like taped this thing closed or something, you know, and they think that they bypassed it. So, but uh, the other robots don't have that problem, but our oldest robot does have, uh, you'll notice that the one is kind of cracked and um, the switch works just fine as long as it doesn't get some of that rubbery stuff wedged in there. So I need to, um, 
I guess, tear off the rest of that a little bit and clean it up a little bit. We don't really have to worry. They, they put that rubber coating on it because in the factory, it's dusty and dirty and, you know, people hose it down and, uh, you know, to protect the electronics inside. In the classroom, it's not that big of a deal, right? Nobody's, we don't have oil floating around, flying around and stuff like that. So it's not that big of a deal in here because it's just the rubber coating. The switch itself is fine. All right, um, but the, the dead man is a three position switch. And so you got to press it right in the middle to get the robot to move when you're in teach mode. All right. You also have to have the teach pendant on. And remember, we discussed this before, but when you're in T1 mode, the fastest the thing can go is 250 millimeters per second. All right, so um, these different indicators tell us whether the robot is like running in auto mode or if it's faulted, there's a fault light and lots of different lights there, but those are the two biggest ones really. Um, and tell us whether we're in step mode or not. Okay, so when we get to talking about programs, we'll talk about how we can step through a program or we can just let it run through all the steps without stopping. Doesn't mean the arm's not gonna stop, but the program execution's not gonna stop. All right, but that's everything you see here. You see the fault and the hold and the production and uh, all those, those are what these LED lights do on the older one. <clears throat> All right, the keypad. When you look at the keypad, the first thing you might notice is there's different colored keys. So when you're, if you want to jog, the buttons that are all blue are basically buttons you might use when you're in jog mode. Okay. The white keys are basically navigation keys. So we have the F1, F2, F3. Those are what they call soft keys because they change what they will do depending on your current screen. So, um, you know, Windows uses like something they call the context menu. So if you right click this right here, when I'm in this window and I right click, it says, you know, save page as or um, select all. But if I'm over here and I right click, I get different choices. That's called a context menu. And that's basically what these F keys do. Depending on what screen you're on, what F1, F2, F3, F4 may or may not do is different, okay? So those are called soft keys. We have the next, we have here F1 through F5, and right beside it is the next, and there'll be a little greater than sign there, and when you press that, it'll kind of change. So a F1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 will do something different when you hit next. All right. Uh, the menus button is right here. It'll bring you into the men menus. Uh, and there's just lots of stuff. We'll look at uh, some of the stuff. Uh, other stuff we won't even touch on in this class. There's so much stuff there. But... Uh, there's a lot of things we will look at in the menus as we go along and we'll uh, modify like when we want to go to tool frames, we would press menu and then find frames underneath the menu. If we go to, um, you know, if we wanted to like change the access limits, I think we talked a little bit about that last week, we would find that under the menu. The function key, the function key is over here, uh, all the way over near the other shift button. What that'll do is there's a, there's a couple of options under the function menu. Let me uh, pull up RoboGuide here. And what the function menu will allow you to do is uh, one of the things it does is it'll give you something called quick menus. And that can kind of be annoying at times. 
Let me just get this started here. I'm just going to call up last week's lab here. All right, so um, when we open up the teach pendant here, then and we pr press this function button, still booting up. But when we press the function button, one of the things that it gives us. Let me flip back to the other teach pendant because it. Okay. All right. So it gives us this menu. The first thing it gives us is a abort all. All right. So when a program is running and then you do a function one, it'll abort that program. So it'll end that program. Now you're going to have to do that a lot in this class because when you're doing the lab and you you're going to create a program. Well, the thing is, when you come up to the robot, somebody else was there before you, and they were running their program. And when you want to run your program, you get this error message uh, saying something like, uh, I forget the exact wording now, but it's going to say like already in use. And it means it's already, it's already running. Uh, and this is a program. So when Joe tries to run it, it won't run. Uh, he's getting this error already in use. And so what you got to do is you got to hit the function key and select number one, abort all. And that'll terminate the program so you can select your own program and run your own program. Okay, so you will definitely have to do that uh, at some time or another this semester, I'll, I would wager. So if you see that message that, hey, this is, uh, you know, already in use or something along those lines, you need to abort that function, that program. However, if you accidentally hit next and get to the next screen here, there's a quick menus. Okay, so before I hit that, now notice if you hit the previous, any menu will go away. All right, so, but um, right now, if I hit menu, notice that if I go to next, notice I have like set up here. So I've got, I've got seven, there's no eight. I don't know why there's not an eight, but I've got one through seven and a nine. And then if I select next, I've got seven more and one of them is system. All right, now, if I hit previous, get rid of that, I'm going to come to function. I'm going to go to the second screen of function and choose quick menus. Now I've selected quick menus. Now when I select menu, notice it gives me one through nine. But when I go to next, there's only four things under there. And like that system settings is gone. And I'm like, what happened here? All right, and I've done this. I'm like, ah, you know, what's going on? And what's going on? is the fact that quick menus is on. It tells you that right there, quick menus. All right, but the first time I did this, I was working on this robot here. I was all by myself. I was very new to working with these robots. And I got that, and I'm like, I can't do anything. What's happening? And uh, I couldn't figure it out. I had to ask the, uh, the instructor who was teaching me, and he's like, oh, yeah, you just got quick menus on. All right, so you just press... Uh, and go back to quick menus and hit it a second time. 
and then you're back to your normal setup. Okay. Now, the, the idea of the quick menus is that, you know, in the factory, you got a lot of users and some users like to go mess with things. And so you can actually put a password on it so that you can set it up for quick menus. And then if no, you know, to switch back to the main menu, you got to have a passcode. And that'll prevent people from messing with things in there that they shouldn't be messing with. And that's the idea of them. Um, but it's easy and to be in class and accidentally mess it up and, and create a, put yourself in the quick menus and not be able to do anything. I mean, well, you can do a few things, but you can't do what you were hoping to do, most likely. So, all right. So given that, um, uh, that's the function feature there. All right. The other thing is these three right in between menu and function. These are the three key things that we use for creating and editing programs. So if I choose select, I can create a program. If I choose edit, it'll take me to the program that I'm currently editing or running. Maybe I'm not it wasn't really editing it, but the program that's running. So uh, notice up here the soft key. So I'm going to create. I'm going to create a program. I'm just going to call this program ABC for right now. Just to have some kind of program here. All right. And so I'm going to put in some, some uh, lines here. Okay, so here's my program. And so when I hit select, I can select whatever program. And then when I hit edit, it'll take me to that program. I wasn't doing it before because I didn't, wasn't on an actual program that I could edit, a teach pennant program. All right, so notice here, up here in the top, it tells me the name of the program that's currently running or at least being edited and what line number its execution is on, okay? And then the data one will take me to those data registers I mentioned a little bit ago. All right, so I pretty much said all this. I'm find a slide ad. I've talked a little bit about the next and the previous. Okay, when you want to get back to a previous screen, you hit previous. It'll re, uh, pull you back to a different screen. Um, next, you notice here, here's the touch up, and then there's a greater than symbol there. If you uh, hit next, that changes. So notice how the F1 and F5 do something different when I hit the next key. Okay. The uh, F2 and F3 and F4 on this particular screen don't do anything at all. All right, I can also use uh, the editing keys to navigate. Um, I can use arrow keys to move up and down. Depending on where I'm at, I can hit enter and uh, enter information in. And I can use the item key. The item key will allow me to jump down to a given line number. All right, so right now I only have five lines in the entire program, but let me put in some other lines. Okay, so here's a program and it's got 19 lines in it. Now, the, actually that last line is, is the end. Every program has an end. And so there's, you see there's actually only 18 lines here. And then it tells me up here on the right there's 19 lines, but that 19th one is just the end. But let's say that I'm up here at line two and I want to go to line 17. I hit item, 
type in 17, hit enter, and it'll jump me immediately to line 17. Okay, so the item is a quick way to uh, get to a given location. Okay, the backspace just deletes the previous character. Uh, when you're in a, a character creating syntax mode. Um, all right, so jogging keys. When you look at these blue jogging keys, we have six of them. If you're in joint mode, which up here tells me I'm in joint, when I'm in joint mode, the, you see a J1, J2, J3, J4. This will allow me to jog the robot, jog joint one of the robot, jog joint two, either in the plus or minus direction, depending on whether it's the one with the minus sign or plus sign. All right, so that'll allow me to jog just one joint at a time. To do that, you got to press down the shift key and then and be holding the dead man if you're on a real robot. But you see, like here, I'm going to do J5. So I'm going to press down the shift and do J5, and you can see that moving on the screen there. Okay, so that's how we jog the robot. So these now, if I choose then coordinate, notice it changes to jog frame, world frame, user frame, or tool frame, and then back to joint. Okay. Right now, if I haven't taught any frames, we'll talk about frames in uh, a couple of weeks yet. We'll, but we'll get to frames. But right now, you always have the world frame. The world frame is set by the origin of the robot. So if you look at our robot here, and you see down here is axis one, and this is axis two. And so where these two intersect is where the origin of the world frame is and so if you look at the robot from the front of the robot so we're looking directly at the front of the robot and i'm in world mode plus x is going to bring that green tip right to me Um, it may not, it, it, it's giving me a limit error. So notice up here in the teach pendant at the very top, it's telling me a limit error. So if you're getting a limit error, it means that you're not allowed to move it anymore in that direction. Okay. So, uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to go back to joint mode and rearrange this a little bit because I got this thing kind of cocked over like this. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try to rotate it a little bit. And then I'm going to see if I can't hit the coordinate, go back to world and do a plus X. Still won't let me do a plus X. I don't know. I must be all the way twisted around, I guess. Okay. Um, I guess I got this robot all the way twisted around. Now, let me show you how to see that. If you hit the position button, you can see axis one is a minus nine, axis two is at two degrees, axis three is a minus 17. So you can kind of see all that.
Yeah, you, you program the robot all from the teach pendant. No. Now, when you do the vision class, you use uh, uh, to teach it to see what you're looking for. You can use you use a PC, um, but for for this class, um, you know, what, I mean, we'll use the RoboGuide software, obviously, which is on a PC. But when you're teaching the robot, you don't need a PC. No. Okay. Um, not for this class. For the vision, on the older robots, you need a PC. On the newer ones, you can do it on the teach pendant. So you don't need a PC for the newer ones, even for the vision. Good question. Any other questions there? All right. So the question was, do we need a PC to, to train the robot? And the answer is no. We can teach it programs directly here. Let me see. Was there any other checking for any other messages, but I guess not. Okay, so, all right. Um, but anyhow, you can see where you're at um, using this position button. You can see where you're at based on the joint positions, number one. And number two, you can see, like you see J5 is a minus 58. So I'm going to add a, I'm going to shift that Okay, and now it's a plus, right? Uh, so, but we can jog those all around. So now, if I go back to my coordinate, I'm going to go to world mode and I do plus X. Still giving me a limit error. I don't know why. I tell you what, I must have... Remember, I think I was showing you last week how to set those axis limits. I'm sorry, menu, system, type, access limits. I must have, uh, yeah, I set that access limit to zero. <laughs> uh, that's why this is not working. Minus um, 180. That's why I keep getting an error message. I can't move anything. All right, because I was messing with those last week. So you need to be careful when you mess with your access limits. You know where you set them to. All right, now when you change that, you need to restart the, the robot. If you change your access limits, you need to restart it. So I'm going to, in the software, I just come over to robot, restart controller, do a cold start. And that will restart this robot. Give it a few seconds. All right, so uh, anyhow, so those are the jog buttons. Now, tool one. Anybody want to take a stab at what tool one does? Trick question. What's that? Uh, well, right now, no, because right now, tool one and tool two and the move menu do absolutely nothing, okay? These things are programmable buttons. We can make them do something, but from straight out from the factory, tool one and tool two do not do anything, okay? You have to configure them, and we'll do that later in the semester. We'll learn how we can attach a macro and make it do something. But right now, tool one and tool two don't do anything. And uh, so these seven keys here, we can program these to do whatever we want. Now, right now, when you press the position button, it'll show you the current position of the robot in both joint mode, world frame mode, or user frame mode. But uh, by default, um, these three don't do anything. The I.O. button, by default, will take you to your inputs and outputs, which we've got a whole chapter. We'll talk about those. The status button will show you some status. I never use this thing, personally. Um, 
the there's you know it shows you uh some information about your joints um i never find this screen useful myself okay but uh i suppose um if you want to know your version id then that's one way to get to it but there's other ways to get to that um but yeah i i don't know i just never use it set up takes you to your basic setup where your frames are at. And again, we'll talk about frames. But again, I never use the setup button. I just go to menu and then six is set up. So by default, this setup button saves you one step because you menu and then select six to get to setup or you can just press the setup button. But you can reprogram it to do something else. So these seven keys right here we can actually program to do what we want okay, so that we can use or define those to do whatever we want them to do. <clears throat> but the position button is very handy. I, I never over, overwrite that. And the IO button takes you immediately to the IO, which is nice. Um, so these two buttons, I find they're default, very useful, and I don't mess with them. All right, so that's pretty much it for the teach pendant. One thing cool in the software here, when you take the it, this position here, it looks about like this one, but this doesn't exist on the real teach pendant. But in the software, we can come in here, it'll show us our position, and we can change it. So we can say, hey, go back to zero. And I can sit here and I can force these all back to zero and hit the move to button and it resets the robot back to zero. All right. You can't do that with this button. You can view. See, now all those are all zeros, but you can't force them to zero on this screen on the real teach pendant. Okay. So that's kind of a nice feature in the software is if you know you want to go here, like if you go to the world mode and you say, I know I want to go to um, <clears throat> 300 millimeters, you can just punch it in and say move to there. Um, and if it can get there, it'll go. In this case, it can't get there for whatever reason. So. Probably um, if I make the Y, not the Y, let's make the Z 300 also. Yeah, it won't go. Uh, but if, if it's a place where it can actually go, you can, you, you know, like if you're really close. Let me, hold on, let me jog this. I'm going to jog, so I want to go to cord joint mode and i want to jog j5 down i'll teach pendant's off teach pendant has to be on to jog it so i'm going to jog this down some now i'm going to grab this now i can grab the z pull it down a little bit i can grab the x if i can get it Grab the X and pull it this way a little bit. All right, so now there's my position. So now if I wanted to change this position to 2000 even and make it go down 200, 300, and hit move to, you see it moved immediately. All right, so uh, you kind of got to get it to the point where it can move, but then when, if you know the values, you can punch them in and say, get there. Uh, and so it makes it very quick to teach points inside this software. All right, but like I say, this, this position button doesn't exist on the real teach pen, and it's only in the software. But this one does, but this one doesn't, it shows you your values, but doesn't allow you to force them back. All right, so, but we do have um, one way of forcing it. If we go to data, in data you have something called data registers, which are just numbers. You know, you can come over here and you can uh, come over here and put in a number. 
Okay, and it's just a value. So you can store that, and later on we'll learn how we can write a program to automatically change those. But if you hit type, one of the choices is the position register. So I hit down arrow and hit enter, and I'm at a position register. Now, I'm, this, I'm at this point right here. I can record this current point in my position, in that position register. And then we can view that. And remember, I just said it to X was 2000 and Z was 300. So now this is where the robot is at right now in space. So the X is 2000 and the Z is, is 300 and the Y is, is 12. I can now come in here. I can hit enter. Um, I, I, actually, I just typed this in. I can type in, I'm going to type in 2500, enter, and I'm going to type in minus 15, and then I'm going to send the Z, I'm going to make the Z 400. Okay, so I can punch these in here, say done. Now, look at F2 is a move to, so I'm going to hit shift F2. And the robot is going to move to that point. Now, we can do that on the real robot. So if you want to go to such and such a point, you can record where you're at and then go to position and you can force it to be a new point. Now, sometimes it won't go. If you think about it, All right, so I don't know if you guys can see me on the screen there or not. Okay, so if you think about going X, Y, Z, okay, so you, you want to go, I look like some bandit or something here, all right, but if you, if you think about, you want to go to this point, Trying to get it on the camera here for those on online. So let's just say that we, you know, this is where I want to go down here to say like this point. So I'm going to come down here and I want to get to this point on the, on the robot. I'm going to bring the arm down here and go to this point. Well, <clears throat> if I wanted to like, go up sideways and I twist my arm and I kind of try to get to it like this, okay? That's kind of hard to do, all right? And twisting all around and getting it down here. And so what happens is when you, when you come in here to this position register, When you come into your position register then and uh, try to change those values, you may get, uh, you, and then you do the move to, you can punch these numbers in, you can punch any numbers you want in here. But then when you try to get a move to, you're probably going to get a limit error or some other related error because you can't get to that point. Uh, the other error you typically get is the singularity error. Um, and that's because, you know, you can't, there's certain ways you just can't move. And there's certain ways that the robot can't. So um, the speed keys here, these speed keys are some of the keys that you can change even when the robot is running in full auto. You can hit the plus percent or minus percent to speed up or slow down the robot. So it works virtually at any time, whether the teach pendant is on or off. Uh, the forward and backward keys, when we get to running, executing a program, Forward will move forward to the next line in the program. Backwards will move backwards 
to the previous uh, thing. Now, there's some limitations. The backward key doesn't work all the time. Um, the step mode. So, like, if I come back, remember, edit. At any time, the edit command will take you to whatever line that you're currently on. Okay, and so if we come over here, I'm going to take this uh, point where I'm currently at. Okay. And I'm going to touch. Just, all right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of teach a quick program here just to move this thing around. I made it bad. All right, but uh, if I come up here, if I try to run this program now, and I just run forward, notice how it ran through the whole program. So I hit an error. Um, but it'll it'll just run through the entire program. But if you turn step on, so if you hit this step button and you turn step on, it'll only run through the program one line at a time. So it goes to that, and then it goes to the next one, and then it stops. So that's what step does. Okay, the hold button, as I said, anytime the arm is moving and you press the hold button, it will stop the program if you're executing a program or if you're just doing like a move to. I just showed you those move to's. When you're doing a move to and you decide you want to stop it and when it hasn't gotten to that point, you hit hold and it'll stop even though it hasn't moved all the way to that point that you were trying to get to. All right, so that's pretty much it for the teach pendant. All right, so that's pretty much it for the teach pendant. Now, um, let's talk about starting up the robot. To start up the mo robot, there's four different start methods. And your book actually doesn't talk about the init one anymore. They, the older book did. But there's an init. There's a controlled start. There's a cold start. And there's a hot start. Now, the uh, if you want to do an init start, you would turn the controller off. And then when you're, while you're holding the controller, press and hold the F1 and F5 keys. Okay? You don't want to do an init. If you do an init start, you just wiped off everything. Everything is gone. All right? So you don't want to do an init, but you might want to do a controlled start. To do a controlled start, you press and hold the previous and the next keys. So don't screw that up. I did that once. It was very embarrassing. I was out on a job and I pressed F1 and F5 and I wiped out their robot and they had to restore it from a backup. <laughs> okay, so you don't want to do that, and that that's why they don't tell you that in the book. The problem is, is if you accidentally hit those two the wrong buttons, which are right next to each other, you don't even know what you did, right? So that's why I think it's important that you at least be aware that you can do that. If you press F1 and F5 instead of previous and next. So make sure you're holding down the right buttons to do a controlled start. All right. The controlled start, what the init does, it deletes all your programs and resets all your variables. Okay. So it, it wipes out 
everything but the main operating system on the controller. All right. Now, what a controlled start lets you do is install software. If you want to install some other software options like Vision, you, you got you you know you want to buy a camera and set up Vision on the robot. You need to get the Vision software. You need to install that. You have to go to a controlled start to install it. If you want to change certain variables, some variables you can change on the fly. But some variables are more critical, so it forces you, you got to boot into what they call the controlled start mode, and then set those variables, and then boot up into cold start. Cold start is the default, okay? A cold start is the default. Now, on the uh, teach pendant, this function, okay? There's a cycle power, and when you choose cycle power, it depends on your teach pendant. Okay, this teach pendant just says yes, cycle power or not. But if I go back to the I pendant for a minute, one way to do a controlled start is if you have the newer teach pe pendant and you hit the function, and you go to cycle power. Where'd it go? Oh, teach pen is disabled. I guess it won't let me do it. Um, I guess it's not um, not just the teach pendant, but the version of controller you have. Because remember, right now I'm on uh, my robot I did last week was the older controller. But on the newer controller, it will tell you when you come here to cycle power, it'll allow you to choose controlled start at that point. Okay. Um, but you got to be on uh, the R30 IB controllers, which are just the two robots in the back of the room. The older robots, the, the 200 IC robots are older and you get what, what I'm, what you're seeing here. You're just getting cycle power, but, the newer robots, you can actually choose a controlled start from the menu. All right, the last choice or start method is called a hot start. The hot start, the only time you would want to do a hot start is if the robot was running and somehow failed and you have to do something to, you have to restart it to get it running. But the difference between a cold and a hot, a cold start resets all your outputs back to zero, which means that if your gripper, if you've got your gripper here and you're holding this thousand bar in the gripper and you do a cold start, your gripper lets go and the whatever it had falls, okay? So, you probably don't want to do that if your gripper is holding something large or valuable or something that's going to cause damage when it lets go. So the uh, hot start will keep all your I.O. or all your outputs wherever they are right now. So to remember those so it won't just start opening up grippers or things like that. All right, so that's the difference on a hot start. So the hot start, if you need to do a hot start, you got to go into your setup screen and tell it, I want to do a hot start. And then you can reboot your controller. All right, so that's pretty much it for the start methods. Okay. The only other thing we wanted to talk about was jogging, and I pretty much already did that. So remember to jog a robot. Let me grab a teach pendant here. Okay, so to, to jog the robot, Okay, so here's here's the teach pendant. Let's see if I can get this camera up high enough. So here's the teach pendant. It's got the dead man switch on the back. Again, you can see on this one the the rubber 
uh, coating is kind of busted off of that. Um, but there's nothing wrong with the switch as long as it, the little pla plasticky, rubbery kind of stuff. Here, let me see if I, there we go. I don't need that anymore. Maybe someday I'll spend the money to get it replaced, but it's not critical in here because we don't have dust and moisture and stuff. So I'm not too worried about it. But so there's the dead man. You press it just real easy. And if you press it too hard, then it opens back up. So you just need to press it a little bit. And then with your thumb, hold the shift key. If you're left-handed, you probably want to hold it with your right hand. So you press in this teach pendant. You see most people, I guess, are uh, just use the left hand to hold it, whether they're left or right-handed, because we got the strap on that side, um, and it helps you hold it in place with the strap. But you press, you press in the dead man, and then hold the shift. So if you want with your left, left hand, you press in this side of the dead man and this shift. If you want to hold it with your right hand, you press in this dead man and hold the shift. Make sure the teach pendant is on. Make sure the controller is in T1 mode underneath there. And I have a video where I, I show all of that. I'll upload. Um, and then you can press these buttons. These blue buttons will jog it. You press the coordinate button to jog it by joint or by world mode. And then uh, you can change the speed using these percent buttons here. Okay. And then you can jog the robot. So next week, when next week we will actually have class. I'll just be doing the lectures, you know, on the weekend or something and upload them. Uh, so next week you want to look at the, the attendance or not, well, the schedule.